So let's talk about lithium batteries and in particular the lithium iron phosphate batteries. So I assume that you're looking for new batteries because you're either replacing your old battery bank or because you're building a new system from scratch. And you've heard that lithium batteries supposedly outperform the conventional lead acid types, but you've also seen that there's a significant price tag that comes with this technology. So now the question is, do they really outperform the conventional ones? To which extent are they better and how do they outperform the lead acid? And therefore, is, are they worth it? Is it a wise thing to spend your money on this technology? My goal in this video is to help you in your decision process uh, of whether to choose for lithium or the conventional batteries. I'll do that by providing you a brief summary of the facts regarding lithium technology. And then after 10 minutes, by the end of this video, you'll be an expert on lithium batteries. Before we go ahead, let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse. I'm a renewable energy engineer and I'm specialized in battery-based off-grid solar energy systems. I've run companies in the design and installation of off-grid systems and I've held the position of energy officer for the United Nations. I founded the company Solar Solution through which I share my knowledge and experience through videos such as this one, through seminars, online articles and personal direct services on my website. I'll provide you the relevant information in four different sections. First, we'll look at the basic design principles between lithium and conventional lead acid batteries. We'll look at the advantages of lithium, the disadvantage of lithium, and by the end of this video, I'll give you a brief summary and conclusion. By the way, throughout this video, if I'm using the term lithium, I'm referring to the lithium iron phosphate batteries or lithium ferrophosphate batteries. If I'm using the word conventional, I'm referring to the lead acid based batteries, including the flooded, AGM and gel batteries. So let's look at the structural difference between the two kinds of batteries. A lead acid conventional battery consists of six identical cells. Each cell has two lead plates that are submerged into an electrolyte and this one cell produces 2.1 volts. Then if you place the six of them in series, you get 12.6 volt for a conventional battery. A typical lithium battery consists of four different cells. Each cell consists of two different plates, a lithium based plate and a carbon based plate they are submerged into an organic solvent and this one cell produces 3.2 volts. Place the four of them in series and you get 12.8 volts for a lithium battery. So let's look at the advantages of lithium batteries. Now the first one that clearly pops out is the weight reduction. So for a similar amount of energy storage, a lithium battery typically weighs 25 to 35 percent compared to the weight of a lead acid battery. The second great advantage is that lithium allows for very high currents. So if you want to discharge your battery really fast, you can in as little as one hour, whereas conventional batteries, it's four to five hours. And if you want to charge your lithium, it's the same, about an hour. But conventional batteries, the first 80% of the capacity, you can do it fairly fast, but the last 20%, you have to do it much slower, otherwise you'll damage it, and this can take several hours. Lithium batteries also excel over conventional batteries when it comes to the discharging and charging efficiency. So, for example, a value of 90% would tell you that as you discharge and charge the battery, 10% of energy is being lost in the process. So, a conventional battery has a value of between 75 and 85% efficiency, while lithium battery is between 90 and 99%. When we want to describe the expected lifetime of a battery, we use the value of cycles. So, one cycle is a complete discharge plus a charge. Now, the average value of the cycles of a lithium battery is significantly higher than the average value of a conventional battery. But I'm saying average because there are conventional batteries that outperform lithium batteries. The last thing I want to mention regarding the advantages of lithium is regarding the voltage during discharge. So if you take a conventional battery, most of the time you see a voltage between 12.6 and 12.2 volts. If you take a lithium battery, most of the time you'll see 12.8 volts. So the difference is quite small, but it can have a significant advantage in certain setups. So now let's look at the disadvantages of lithium, and there's four different things I would like to point out to you. The first one is that lithium batteries are not as idiot-proof as they sometimes seem. They still need additional components in order to prevent the system from catastrophic failure. And this is mainly due to low voltage, high voltage, or over amperage draw. Now, this is not a problem per se, but as you add components to a system, you also increase the probability that one of those components of the system will eventually break. The second disadvantage is regarding the upfront initial investment for lithium. 
since lithium is four to five times more expensive per unit of energy if you compare it to conventional lead acid batteries. Though there's also good news here, because since lithium is relatively young, the price continues to drop. We're seeing an average annual price reduction of 7%, so that's relatively good news. I'm also getting a lot of questions regarding the fire hazard of lithium batteries. Now, this used to be a substantial issue with the older kind of lithium technologies, where they could catch fire due to a thermal runaway or physical damage of the battery. We are now talking about lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are a different kind of technology. They're designed and built in a different way, whereby the risk for fire hazard has been reduced to almost zero. Now, the last disadvantage, number four, is regarding the operating temperature range of lithium batteries. Both conventional and lithium batteries don't like to be operated in sub-freezing temperatures, but lithium typically shouldn't. Of course, there are always solutions for it. Some batteries come with heating strips on them, and certain types of lithiums can still be used in sub-freezing, but at extremely reduced charging and discharging rates. So this brings us to the summary and conclusion, and I'll give you five key points to remember. The first one is that if you compare lithium to conventional batteries from technical perspective, lithium almost always outperforms conventional batteries. The second conclusion is that it is important to set your minimum system performance requirements correctly. So if you would require your system to deal with very high loads, or if you would say that you want to have the shortest charging time ever possible, your go-to option would definitely be lithium. The third conclusion is regarding the lifetime of batteries and is a bit of a tricky one. So it's absolutely true that the average lifetime of lithium batteries excels those of conventional batteries. At the same time, if you take a high quality lead acid battery and compare it to a low quality lithium battery, then the conventional battery will win. The last two are that lithium still requires four to five times the upfront initial investment if you compare it to conventional lead acid batteries. Although there seems to be a great future for lithium since the average price still continues to drop 7% per year. So now a question for you, if there's something else that you'd like to learn about off-grid energy systems, let me know in the comments below and I'll use this as inspiration to provide more videos for you and for others. And of course, remember, you've got all these great options. You can like, subscribe, share, you name it. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.